This is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. We hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I got good news for you, my friend. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Play close attention as we prepare now to go into the word. So we're going to be coming from Matthew chapter 21. The topic of the message today is my house shall be called the house of prayer. For those of you who are writing, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Did we got that? I see y'all still writing. And thank God for y'all that, that, that are faithful on these Friday nights, on these Bible studies to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Any pastor will, I, I believe they agree with me. The ones that come during the week, those are the ones that we're truly pastoring. Huh? Those are the ones that are hungry for the word of God. Those are the ones that want to grow in the word of God. Those that have grown to a place of maturity where they understand the importance of the word of the living God. So keep on coming and encourage other of your brothers and sisters to come as well. And they'll get it. They'll catch on. They'll catch on. They'll catch, somebody say they'll catch on. They'll catch on. Eventually they'll catch on to the glory of God. So Matthew chapter 21 Let's pray before we get into the word. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us today in this word. Teach us. Open it up to us. Let our eyes be open that we may see what the Lord is saying to us. Let our ears be open that we may hear and understand. Let it get in our hearts, in our spirits on today. Holy Ghost, have your way. We yield to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I yield to you, Father. I yield to your spirit. I yield to the Holy Spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus, that he might teach us on today. Teach us. This is our request. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. So Matthew chapter 21, I'm going to begin reading at verse number 12. Y'all ready today? It's going to be interesting. Inter Somebody said it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. We thank God for the cool of the morning. I don't know. I was just cold. For, so I guess because my wife had the house so cold. <laughs> I woke up. I was freezing in prayer. But it, it may not be really that cold outside, but I'm still cold from, from being in the house. <laughs> she had... It, it, it's cold. It's cold in my house, y'all. It's cold. It is cold in my house. So I'm still kind of chilly right now. That's why I have a little overcoat on. You know, I'll be like, nah, what's wrong with Pastor? Why you got that big coat on? Your first lady had the pastor freezing. Amen. Amen. I was freezing. But let's go here to Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning at verse number 12. But don't forget the topic of the message. My house shall be called the house of prayer. I think we should say that. Let's say it. Say, my house shall be called. The house of prayer. One more time. My house shall be called the house of prayer. And he didn't have the ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. He gonna be speak, he gonna be, we're going to be speaking in dimensions when we talk about this house. huh? More than one dimension when we speak about the house shall be called a house of prayer. So let's go here, Matthew chapter 21, verse number 12. He said, and Jesus went into the temple of God. Say the temple of God. Make mental note of that now. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Verse number 13, and said unto them, it is written. Somebody say, it is written. It is written. And when you see it, it is written, that thing is established. Huh? That's very important. When he, when Jesus would go back and say, it is written. Amen. This thing is established. Huh? How many know that the word of God is going to stand when everything else falls? Huh? But he says, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. And then check out verse number 14. And the blind 
And the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. I mean, we live in a different day and time going off. You know, I always go off, but I'm going to get back. I still, it's something that really bothers my spirit. I don't understand. I asked the Lord about it. It, it bothers my spirit. We once had a, a blind person come to this ministry before, right? Y'all remember that? Now, this one was totally blind, legally blind, totally blind, totally blind. With the stick at all, totally blind. I mean, I went out going a different direction uh, than the other. We prayed for this lady. No, she didn't, she didn't receive her sight fully, what she's seen. But she saw something she never saw before. She, she began to cry out. Remember in the ministry, she said, I see your fingers. I see your fingers. I see your fingers. You're moving your fingers. And I seen one of her eyes, like, straighten up like God was going to do it. Like I say, look at her eye. It came into focus. I don't know if y'all remember I said that. But, 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 but she never came back. No, she didn't see the whole, the whole, the, the full, the manifestation of it. But God touched that lady before all of our eyes. Someone, she, she began to cry. Tears run out of her face. Let me call. I'm going to call my mama. I mean, so something happened to the lady was all I'm saying. Amen. And she has, that lady didn't come back. And that's been, that's like, that bothers me. I'm like, what? Not, you know, what's, what's wrong with this generation? I don't understand. I just don't want to throw that out there. <laughs> but I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't, some things, you know, you know, men of God, we come up here, we look like, you know, nothing bothers us. And we don't think, you know, we just got the faith. We just preach. But some things bother us. You know, I'm like, Lord, did I do anything wrong? Amen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But I just don't understand that when some when God uh touches you, touches you, you know, touches you, touches you in a way that you know that you touch. I'm not talking about me coaching her and and you understand this this lady, how many over here? She cried out. Amen. And said, I see your fingers or whatever. Amen. I don't know. That just threw, I don't know why I threw it. I guess because we were reading about the, and the blind and the lame were here. Where? 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 Were the, what did he do? It? He did it in the temple. He did it in the house. So we know it's order as well. Amen. That people can actually come to the house. Hmm? Not just to receive spiritual sight, but you can come into the house and receive even natural sight. Hmm? But say we got to begin to take the house more seriously. We got to take the house more seriously. That's why things are not happening in the house. Now, you know I'm a firm believer that, hey, everything's not supposed to happen in the house. The real work is out there. But yet and still, we see Jesus still performing miracles, meeting needs in the house. And we wonder why needs are not being met like this in our houses or the houses of God that we have built or we rent or whatever, what the place that we have chosen to gather together or to assemble ourselves. Why don't we see these things happen in the house? Are you with me right now? The number one thing that comes to my first to me is we don't take the house of God serious like we supposed to. Huh? We don't take the house of God serious like we supposed to. Because it's not sacred to us like it's supposed to be. And I know all the scriptures I'm going to take you to. I'm going to take you to some of the ones that are popping in some of y'all here right now. I might not be talking to your, those of you that are sitting here, but somebody's listening on radio. Scriptures are popping in the head right now. People that are watching, scriptures are popping in the head right now to counteract what I just said. Amen. But we're going to go to scriptures even on today. I know all the things that you're thinking about right now, but we don't take the house of God seriously. We don't. Somebody say we don't take it serious no more. Amen. There's certain things we shouldn't do in the house of God. Shouldn't do it nowhere, but but at least have the respect for the house. Do you see? Well, we're going to get more in depth. We're going to go to more of the gospels. It's going to uh, paint an even broader picture of what we're seeing right now in Matthew chapter 21. He's basically just telling us what happened. We're going to get to one of the gospels where it kind of shows the expression that Jesus had while he was doing this. Huh? Because right now we're reading that in verse number 12, he says, and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold. Just said he cast them out, you know, and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold 
does. Somebody say, we have to be careful. We have to be careful, men of God, women of God, uh, lay people. We all have to be careful how we uh, conduct ourselves and what we allow to be conducted in the house of God. That's why I was telling y'all the Friday night crowd how, how me and the Lord were conversing in spirit. You understand some of the things that I've seen that's taking place in the house of God. To the point to just, uh, I know what it was about, you know, trying to keep the saints enthusiastic, trying to keep the saints excited about their salvation. I say, if you got to bring all these gimmicks and all these things in the house of God to keep you, the people, enthusiastic or excited about them, I question whether you're truly saved or not. Because the word of God should be enough. Amen. For you to stay encouraged, to hear the word of God. Don't you know the word of God is life? It's a living word. The word is a living, it's sharp, it's powerful. Huh? It's like what the Bible even says. It's like a, a two-edged sword. The word of God, say the word of God is something else. <laughs> the word of God is something else. It's wonderful. It's powerful. It's life. It's life to our spirit. And you kind of tell you born again, and the word is not enough to keep you. I got to do tricks. I got to do gimmicks. I got to bring all this stuff to keep you excited or to keep you coming back. If the word is not enough to keep you coming back, like I say, you need to check yourself. Hmm? The word alone, because your spirit, if you have the spirit of God in you, if you, your spirit has been born again, if you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, that's the craving. That's your new craving. Your craving has just became the word of God. Your appetite is supposed to be the word of God. That's why it says in him, you know, we live, we move, and we have our being. We live. Somebody say we live. We move. Amen. It's in him that we live. It's in him that we move. It's in him that it, our very existence is what it is. It's because of him. Who is him? Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? The word of God. And the word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us. The Father and the Son, they make their bold on the inside of us. They live on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. At least they're supposed to. Amen. Elohim. Amen. God in the plural sense. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. Hmm? So the word of God say the word of God is enough. The word of God is enough. The word of God is enough. So let's go on for verse number 12 back down. You know, we in a teaching mode. Some of we in a teaching mode. And Jesus went into the temple of God. Say temple of God. Temple of God. Temple back then was what we'll call church today. Amen. Amen. Somebody say this is the temple of God. Men of God, I need you to help me keep the temple of God holy. Men, amen. Hell, I need you to help me keep the temple of God not only holy but orderly. Amen. It's your responsibility to help me. Even you women, help me. You understand? Certain things we shouldn't do. I, I'm finna go off on, on, on the deep end now. Some people say, well, it, man, we shouldn't even be really, there's certain jokes and stuff you shouldn't be saying in the house of God. You shouldn't be saying them anyway. Not about our speech of foolish jestings and all of that stuff like that. Shouldn't talk about anything in the house of God. Shouldn't talk about anything anyway. Certain things. You understand what I'm saying? We can, should con conduct ourselves in a holy manner. Hmm? Because we serve a holy God. How how would you if you if you were literally if you literally God let you literally just stand in his presence, you know, and you know how he is, you know what the Bible describes how he is. Think of how would you conduct yourself? Huh? Huh? Think about that. How would you conduct yourself before God? How would you conduct yourself? He give you a vision of heaven right now. I'll let you go into heaven right now. How would you conduct yourself at the throne room, of the throne in the throne room of God? Hmm. Huh? 
How many, how many thoughts are you rebuking you and rebuking your mind? You better get up out of here. I'm before the Lord right. Don't you know you're before the Lord right now? Hmm? You know why we was talking about the Sabbath and all that stuff? Jesus I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Now we keep every day holy now. Amen. Every day is holy because we serve the Lord. So every day, every day of the week should be holy for you because you serve the Lord of the Sabbath. You serving the Lord. Amen. You're serving him every day of your life. Everywhere you go, everything, your conversation is supposed to be holy. So amen. Say, I'm holy. I'm Tom Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry. Perhaps you are blessed by the broadcast that you just viewed. If so, we want to hear from you. We want you to dial this number that's at the bottom of your screen right now because somebody's going to be waiting on just your call. The number is Erico 904-713-3609. Again, it's Erico 904-713-3609. Until next time, we'll be waiting to hear from you.